Robin Hood Episode 3, the one that's got everything. We've got new music to make your ears bleed. The arrow I shoot at the bullseye. Had that boy running cause he ain't a cool guy. Self-awareness. Anyone wanna eat garbage and watch trash? Way ahead of you. I've been doing it for hours. But best of all, a never-ending supply of comedy gold. I'm not hungry. Maybe we could go for a walk or something. <laughs> no! No! Stop it! Your mother is paralyzed from the waist down. <laughs> we start with Little John, who I think is trying to work up the courage to see Robin. Don't worry, mate. I know exactly how you feel. We get a flashback. Back when he was a kid and he was getting beaten up by... Well, adults. And along comes Lionheart, who takes a stricter attitude to crime than the sheriff. <gasps> I guess it's okay when he does it. So he challenges the leader, take a man and go! I've just realized that the whole Lionheart thing is... It's in Maine, isn't it? <laughs> My favorite thing about the show is its subtlety. We'll finish up this later. I don't even know what he's supposed to be finishing up. He just spent his time sitting on a box. He runs away with his tail between his legs. And Lionheart's like, come on, little John. Oh, that's where he got his name from. We're all really impressed. And look, there were problems when Ahsoka just kept referencing its own lore. But when Robin Hood references something completely unrelated to it, are you supposed to go, oh, nostalgia? It has no effect. Oh, they said Sherwood Forest. We get a Bible verse, better a close neighbor than a far brother, Proverb 2710. Because if there's one thing we know, it's that Robin Hood's gang of merry criminals, they're all definitely Christian. You don't need that proverb up there, mate. You need the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal. But it turns out he's actually staring at the face of Jesus of Lionheart. <laughs> Is this one going to get hit by lightning too? But then as the gang's talking, the idiot of the group, I don't know his name, but he has the worst idea of everyone in the entire group every time. He's essentially this show's Baldrick. I yo, I've been thinking. Press X to doubt. He should have come out going, hey guys, I've got a cunning plan. Your line heart day coming up soon. No. At least she's learned. He opened his mouth, we're all gonna die. You don't even know what I was gonna say. No, but we knew you were gonna say something. That's enough. It should be seen and not heard. And judging by her expression, she's not even sure about the first bit. So you weren't gonna say that we should perform? What? You can't perform. It'd be public. I mean, now that you bring it up, you don't even know what I was gonna say. But I could be talking about it. Yes, and you're wanted for armed robbery. If you do a performance, the sheriff will just turn up and arrest you, justly. In our hood gear, the same hood gear we use to trash the sheriff's drone. Oh my. Okay, so if you know it's stupid because you got Robin to say it, why did you humiliate the poor guy who came up with the idea? I was taking the piss that he was always an idiot, but it seems it's deliberate. Man, I figured y'all be on the same page. Much, you get it right? Do you hate this guy or something? Yeah, if I was gonna do anything, it should be a bigger heist. Why? What happened to, we're stealing to save my mom? Now it's, Hey, let's just rob the place because we're scum. <laughs> you didn't even know what to do with your first load of money. It was just, let's waste it on a bouncy castle. Food, drinks, barbecue pets. Bouncy castle. And now you're like, let's rob a bank, eh? Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. We still got to finish donating the rest of what we got from Chopping Prince. Oh yeah, donating. Right, otherwise known as money laundering. Still gotta clean our last school, folks. Or untouchable. You're untouchable. You got tracked down to your own house within the first three minutes of the first episode. And think about how many people would be able to help. You're not helping any, you're stealing from people. You are committing acts of evil and then going, but I'm a good guy. Yeah, we damn near doing the Lord's work. Amen, sister. I tell you what. When the Times colonists said that Robin Hood was for an updated morality, they were right. This pair should have pissing horns. We're gonna see a red pointy tail swinging behind them in a second. I ain't trying to find trouble. We've been doing this anyway. Yes, because the justice system refuses to hold you accountable for your actions. Shooting videos, dodging the cops. Yes, and that's the problem. We need to make you not dodge them. Bring the Joker in here. He'll know what to do. The way I see it, there's nothing different besides thousands of new followers. You're doing this for a thousand followers. Dude, the truth comes out, eh? Oh, we're doing it to help people and get followers. This guy would throw his own mom off a bridge for a crumb of clout. In fact, he'd probably do it voluntarily and then try and get the clout afterwards. Never let a crisis go to waste. I don't know. I still got to pick up my mom from the hospital. What? I think we should all go and commit armed robbery of a bank. I don't know about that, mate. I don't know whether we should commit violent crime. I've got to pick up my 
mum from the hospital. Is that the only point of contention that you have with that? Not, what do you think you do when you're cretin? No, it's like, oh no, I would, I would. I'd love to, mate, I'd love to. But I'm a bit busy until two. So then she starts taking the piss out of, oh, you've got it bad for Robin, which is unfortunate considering Robin's gonna get with Marion, if for no other reason than to save a fortune on a jar, I guess. And the other problem is, of course, this guy reviewed Robin Hood, so he's just not a real man. Would you tell her that you could review, would, would that be the thing you would do? Would you tell her that? We get this sign, prison area, do not pick up hitchhikers. Like, dude, how often do people escape from your prison that you had to put up a sign warning people about it? Are your prisons as bad as the sheriffs who are trying to catch them? Because let's face it, those sheriffs are so awful, only the thickest of individuals will ever get caught. And so despite the fact that everyone inside that prison will have an IQ under 35, somehow they're still outsmarting the prison guards. Oh, well, I, I guess he was one of the people that got caught by the sheriff. Boss. Welcome home. Hey, at this point, I'm all for him returning. We saw how he dealt with people at the start. At this point, that's probably the only thing to get Robin crew back on the straight and narrow. Whoa, whoa, que seto? Cool. Well, I guess we've discovered Director X's music video influence. Ah, ah, ah. Jacket. Oh, mate, put a jacket on. Hey, I've been in prison for years, but I've still got higher standards than someone who's got a cookie jar. I missed you too. We didn't miss you though, did he? <laughs> So it's like, first I'm gonna get new threads. It's understandable, he doesn't even have a shirt. And then it's to Sherwood. We be robbing, robbing, robbing. I give it one thing, it's the most accurate soundtrack I've ever heard. Probably I was pitched to the producers. So what's this show about? Well, they be robbing, 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 like a Saturday night in California. Series two's about how they're in a food desert, but they don't understand why. But then a mum returns home and her daughters are, they're as proficient at this as you'd expect. First thing they do is ram her into a wall. If you're proficient with a bow, you should have good hand-eye coordination and the ability to aim. Stop ramming her into walls. When if you're gonna bang any bit, at least if it was a leg, she wouldn't feel it. Back up and then turn the push handles. Yeah. I think we've all got that, dear. This isn't complicated. Literally just gave me the advice of go backwards and then turn it. Oh my. This is like the people who said you had to watch Rebels for Ahsoka because the story was so pissing complicated, no one could possibly understand. And they said this was the best chair they had. I mean, it is Canadian healthcare. So quite frankly, I believe them. You're lucky you got out of there alive, to be honest. No <laughs> bigger danger to you than the sheriffs. We made some minor renovations. You certainly have. Where's the cookie jar gone? It was there. It's been replaced by flowers. We can't lose that. They'll be pregnant before their day's out. We cleared out most of the glasses and plates from the cabinet. But where's the cookie jar? Thinking we can make some of our famous caramel oatmeal cookies. What? We know what your cookies are like, love. Is this why the jar's moved? You're stocking up. Today's the day we do the entire tower. I'm sure there'll be plenty of other treats. Yeah, you don't have to do everybody. Leave some for everyone else. Yeah, but ours always sell out. You have a duty to give the people what they want. <laughs> <laughs> Lionheart must have been a great man to cause all this. And I would hate to disappoint. You good? You'd think so, she's had enough practice. You looking for something? Yeah, the cookie jar. Why have you moved it? At this point, it's just a matter of national security. We cut over to the mechanic shop, where remember, she's an employee. <laughs> We got a deal, Louise, you knock. Yeah, he's your boss, love. He owns the place. He doesn't have to knock, entering his own business, just because it's likely you'll have a gang of criminals there chopping up an illegally stolen car. I need you to knock so I can hide my crimes that I'm committing on your premises. He's like, hey, I've just come in for some tools. But you don't need them. It's a blown head gas kit. You haven't even seen it. But I can smell maple syrup. <laughs> She's like a wine connoisseur. I smell maple syrup, a, a hint of burnt petroleum. <laughs> Just a, a slight whiff of worm secretion. It's nourishment. It's the part of himself that he gives to us. Antifreeze leaking into the cylinders. I'm such a good mechanic, I can smell what's wrong with a car. This is like a superpower. <laughs> Socket wrench. My boss doesn't even know what he needs to fix a car. When he owns a garage, he's got to get her to hand him a socket wrench. You can always say that if everyone's equal, it just gets dragged down to the lowest common denominator, but I've never truly felt like I found the lowest common denominator before. Thank you much. You're amazing much. Wait, I didn't know your name. Is your name much? First name too. You're the best mechanic I've ever worked with. Much. Cause nothing beats egotistical, narcissistic self-affirmation. You're the most insufferable bin I've ever met, much. You sure are the mouthiest.
Isn't it weird how they make a scene solely to make one person look great and you just end up liking the other one instead? <laughs> like they say, they're just doing this for an updated morality. And so because they're evil, everything they despise is actually good. <laughs> Let me take a look at Sally for you. You what? At this show, we're just having it off with everybody. Sally, Steve, Jane, Samantha. Can't fix that. You'd have more luck raising the dead. Oh, I can fix anything. I'm a mechanical genius. Just give me a sniff. I'll fix it. We cut back to Robin's house now and we get uh, this. <laughs> Wait, don't move! Why was she moving? She can't walk. Why was she getting out of a chair in the first place? Mom, oh my god. Are you hurt? Get the chair. Alright, that sounded a little bit aggressive. I also wouldn't keep calling it the chair. Telling someone to get in the chair has different connotations. But what was she doing, like, holding a tray of cookies? I don't even understand what happened. Did she bake the cookies in the kitchen, wheel herself all the way over here, turn around, back up? and then stand up and drop them? Or is this just where your camera fit best and so you framed everything around it? Mom, are you okay? Stop asking her if she's okay. What was she doing? That's the puzzle that needs to be solved. Talk to me. There's nothing to talk about. Yes, there is. What on earth were you doing? You have now created like a mystery puzzle. This is like Jonathan Creek solving a locked room mystery. Someone's been murdered in a room, but the door was locked from the inside. All I want to know is how on earth did that happen? And what did you think you were doing at the time? <laughs> Careful, love. You send that camera down any further, you'll start looking up her skirt. So Robin's driving around on a bike that I'm, at this point, I'm just going to assume is stolen. She gets pulled over by a sheriff. And it's Captain, I just shot your mum for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I guess he's back off the investigation. Miss Loxley. They suspended you. Yeah, but you realise people can come back after a suspension, right? That's why it's called a suspension. Internal affairs cleared me of any wrongdoing. I honestly don't know how, but at the same time, I'm not surprised, given the show we're watching. I mean, you should know, this isn't my first uh, misunderstanding. So after a whole speech, which I'm sure Director X just imagines is running through the head of every single person who's patrolling the streets. I don't mean Robin. <laughs> yeah, I had quite the reputation for enthusiasm back at Mercy, yeah. So you should probably stop committing crime, then. What can I say? The system works. You can't say the system works after we spent the entire last episode of watching Robin escape justice. If it worked, she'd be in prison by now. So he starts threatening her. Oh, I'm sure you think you want to sue me, but you really don't because I'm sworn to serve and protect you. Every single one of you, and I will. Oh, I'm sorry, mate, but you're being so subtle right now, I'm not sure she'll get the hint. This is genuinely the kind of world that some people think they live in. Have a safe ride, Miss Loxley. Oh, that was nice of him. He's so polite. I don't know why you could look so terrified, love. He's just told you to have a nice day. Don't commit any crimes. You'll be fine. Maybe she's scared because she knows there's no way I can possibly live a life where I don't commit violent acts of robbery. <laughs> That's beyond me. <laughs> Simply doesn't have the self-control. Six dealers trying to set up on the block. Bam, bam, bam. Is that true or... They talk about Lionheart, how he stopped dealers setting up. He locked them in their car and rolled it over. Oh, that makes it all better then. So did this guy punch a load of people? No, he wouldn't do that. He just locked them in a car and turned it over a cliff. Yeah. I mean, he's not an animal. He wouldn't use his fist. He was far more civilized. I mean, has he ever considered driving them to the sheriff's department? I mean, imagine. But then he reaches into his hoodie, pulls out a wad of cash. Oh yeah, we'll have those donations, you know. Now we've got about a bit of money laundering. I can clean this. The solution that he has for all crime Crime is just to commit more crime. Robin tells him about the guy that's back on duty. He threatened me. He rolled up on me. You okay? I mean, she's not been shot, so, you know, she's better than her mom. He rolled up on me. And then this guy returns, who so far, I don't know whether we've even said this guy's name. Covered head to toe in white, which is obviously an excellent thing to wear if you plan to beat people up. Yeah, what you want is just patches of evidence all over you. How long has it been since Guy Gisborne grazed your hole? Sir? Guy Gisborne. Previously played by a guy from Spooks. Fair? Nine years, five months, and eight Amazing. days. I really just wanted him to go, shh. It was rhetorical. Little John starts having flashbacks to the start of the episode. I don't know why. We saw it at the start of the episode. We don't need to see it again. Oh, it's too sure he's got PTSD. Is it John? Is that you, little fella? Yeah, I've grown a bit. Came back from the army, started beating up my friend with a stick. What's it to you? This is little John. He looked big enough to me. Ugh. Calm down, love. You're like a dog on heat. Besides, it was Robin that wanted to ride a bike, not him. Coco. Coco, you're supposed to be with me. If you go with someone else, how else am I gonna play checkers without your jacket? It turns out he got out for, like, good behavior. You can't be here. You really need to start giving reasons for your statements, love. But Bill has been set at $30,000. <laughs> 
That's impossible. Because obviously he can be. He, he is there. So he goes on a rant about, I came here to fix your mistakes. Lionheart must be spinning in his grave, generating electricity for this place. The sheriff can come here anytime she wants. Some rich businessmen want to buy this very expensive property. And then my favorite comment. And, and then this, this, what was the name again? How they call it? The, the hood. The hood. Based economy. Yeah. Said it with all the condescension that that name deserves. I live in the hood. Yeah, but why would you want to? Improve the place. Make it better. You live there. It's your duty. Do you share with a bad name? Yeah, you're giving it a bad name because you're all criminals. And they're like, oh, well, we like being waste of space. But he says, it's understandable. You've had no one to protect you until now. And then this guy, we don't need you. Uh, dude, what do you think you're doing? I'm not being funny, but you're at least two foot shorter than him. If this was a Disney Marvel show and you didn't have dangly bits, you might stand a chance, but come on. We don't need your protection. Go! <laughs> I, that's just stupid. I don't mean the fact that he's got a gun. I mean, he's holding it sideways. That gun will recoil to the left. You're not going to control that. I'm English. I know that. I know Canadians have similar gun laws to us, but come on, Director X, you should know better. 2015, his life changed after being struck by a bullet while hosting a party. That guy would miss every bullet past the first one, even at that range. Put the gun down. Please. Yeah, you probably should have added that to the first bit. Like, suddenly I've learned manners. Little John, upstanding member of society, he does know polite etiquette, but only at gunpoint. I mean, you're kind of making it look like he's got a point when it takes a gun to have you say please. Ah, ah relax. I wasn't going to shoot any of you. I just want that money. Which, to be fair, most of it's the what he nicked anyway. I'm not sure how mad they can be. <laughs> yes, somebody stole from you. But at the end of the day, you stole it from somebody else. Am I supposed to feel sympathy? The only person I feel sorry for is the guy whose car you nicked. So he sets up a protection racket. I'll be back every Friday for the money. We cut over to him staring out of a window intently. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to rage in my own corner. He's the one who killed Lionheart. Well, that puts a different spin on it. This should be easy to solve then. Just get Robin to get a bow and arrow out. As long as she doesn't miss this time you'll be fine so how's he out because no one talked well isn't that your problem imagine what the difference would have been if you'd actually i don't know cooperated maybe if you spent less time making shows about how you just get shot randomly for no reason whatsoever and instead held people accountable for their own actions under a justice system people might have actually cooperated with them and then he wouldn't have got out it's almost like you're causing your own problems not like the beast cure yeah, because if the one thing we know about the Beast, it's that she doesn't like arresting people. What even is this storyline? Every other episode has had the Beast go, we really need to arrest these criminals. And now you're like, well, she doesn't care about arresting criminals. You can't even keep your own story straight. You wanted people to talk. Why didn't you get them to talk? Oh, the last thing I want to be doing is held responsible for something. He went down on a weapons charge. What's the plan now? I don't know. Maybe talk. Tell people what's going on. The hood can't handle Guy Gisborne. The sheriff's department could though, couldn't they? He's going to roll through here and take everything. This ain't Prince. This ain't even the sheriff. No, he's far less of a threat than them. This is just a random bin with a gun. He's basically you, but with better weaponry. He doesn't hurt people to get what he wants. Hurting people is what he wants. Well, to be fair, he, he probably does both. He did get the money, which is what he wanted. He also didn't hurt anyone. I'm gonna handle this. Why? Because you're in the army? Well, yeah, that's a good start. I'm a trained soldier and fighter who's proficient with weaponry. That's a very good start. What are your qualifications? A loyalty card at the local viral infection clinic. You barely hold a bow. Yeah. Based. <laughs> Maybe being in the army enables me to know how to fight. This is our neighborhood too. Believe me, everyone knows you're the ones dragging it down. Yo, I'm not discussing it. What's going on with you, LJ? Really? What's going on with you? This is the first time you've actually acted heroic in our hero series. The rest of us just want to commit crime. You actually want to solve problems. I don't know how to handle this. There might be one of us who's actually got some morals. Oh no, I can't believe he's developed morals. So then he starts like boxing. Uh, the guy's got a gun, mate. Go to a range. We'll get another flashback and we get a scene about how Lionheart's telling him that he shouldn't fight. Let me go! Breathe! Breathe. Look, I mean, I say that some people are so stupid, I'm surprised they remember how to breathe. This is the first case I've seen of somebody actually having to remind somebody, though. Breathe. Yeah, that's it. 
Okay, mate, this is getting a bit creepy. So he starts whining. Oh, they're coming at me. Do you want me to just take it? And it's like, no, sometimes you just got to beat the living crap out of them. But there was like five of them against you. So, you know. <laughs> so Robin comes to get impressed by this guy beating up an inanimate object. You think you're the only one who's angry? No, but he's the only one putting it to productive use, love. Your best plan at the start of the episode was commit another robbery. I'm protecting you. I'm protecting all of you. How? Considering he's punching somebody in the face may give you a bit of a clue, love. Keep up. Considering your only defense mechanism of protection is, oh, we better cry a little bit. Quite frankly, he seems to have the better idea. You're gonna roll up on him and his crew and do what? Well, depends what he's got available. You've got a bow and arrow. Can you aim? I got ideas. I mean, if your ideas are beating up a doll, she's probably got a point. He will kill you. I can't have that. Oh, watch out, love. He's picked up a stick. Absolutely no chance he'll be in trouble now. We need you. Let us help. You're still here? <laughs> it only took two weeks, but he's finally seen through it. So they have a discussion about what to do. He gives a big long story about if you kill someone, someone will kill you back for him and you start a big long chain. I mean, I don't know, mate. They're not lemmings. They'll run out eventually. Besides, that sounds like a great idea. That'll give you a second series. And Lineart starts saying, we can improve everything. It's changing. We're changing it right now. It's like, that's weird. Because even years after you've died, it's still a sh so maybe you should have improved it a bit more. Taught them not to be criminals, rather than just not to kill people. I don't know if you've noticed. Most people don't need to be taught not to kill people. It's weird that this is one of your primary messages, to be honest. You can be better. So he gets confronted by, I was gonna say the villain, but they're all villains. Like, I'm, I'm not even sure who to root for here. Very surprised to see you back here. You could have turned me in. I would have turned you in. No one talked. Yeah, yeah they were idiots, weren't they, really? But you didn't. Your dumbass cut a charge anyway. Yeah, but it was nowhere near as severe. At the start of the episode, they said the reason he's out is because nobody talked. Keep your story straight. For an episode, please. So he starts kicking off and going, oh, you're ashamed of the truth. And he shoves him against the wall, so I, d I don't know what he's meant to be ashamed of. Hopefully we find out. It's Robin Hood, nothing's guaranteed. These are good people, they'll fight you. The second half's true, but they're not good people. Come on. These are criminal scum, they'll fight you. Would have been, a, like, a good sentence. Or is it, oh yeah, the people with masks? I'm gonna add them to my wardrobe after I've washed out the blood. And of course the guy, you're like, oh, is he gonna do something? I don't no. Oh, it was a point of sparring then, you coward. Hey, hey. Yeah, I mean, uh, guess you should have trained a little bit harder. <laughs> I don't know, maybe shopped him to the sheriff. Is this gonna be an entire episode of people refusing to do something until he eventually kills one of you and then you do something, finally? If only you'd done it half an hour ago, you could have saved somebody's life. Do you know what happens when there's no more wolves in the forest? There's always more wolves in the, well, not in England actually, we we killed them all. You start importing wolves, I don't know. The grazers take over. Yeah, the, the, those grazers. <laughs> Where are you going with this metaphor? They eat too much, they grow too fat, the forest withers. I think he's talking about Trudeau. They start wearing cosplay, it's a disaster. Bring back the lobos, control the grazers, and the world is balanced again. The only thing worse than a pathetic villain is a pathetic villain who thinks he's a philosopher. The forest blooms. We're just all threatening each other, but no one's going to do anything about it. Like, I, this is the most... I hate it when this happens in TV shows. If you're going to get a weapon and pull it on... So use it! All this... Oh, I know you're a threat, but I'm not going to do anything about you. Stupid. This is what Game of Thrones had for entire seasons. It was pathetic. So he offers to take him under your wing. Come to the dark side, my one. You can learn from me. Let me teach you what Lionheart couldn't. Which is presumably how you actually follow through on your plans. They, they do not find out who you really are. Did you kill Lionheart? Ooh, the twists. I've not seen this yet. I don't know. Do you believe in miracles? Not at the moment, because your mic's still working. Just goes to show those prayers haven't worked yet. Because your boy's out here been turning water into wine, baby. If I had to guess, the one thing about the Bible that guy knew, it probably would have been how to make alcohol and how to walk on water, simply because it'd come in useful when he's running from the sheriff. Although, let's be honest, his superhero abilities would just be sort of exaggerated and he, he'd just be going ice skating. Let me tell you, when he does not want to be found, he is not found. Does he not want to be found or just not want to be found by you specifically? I have a feeling you get that a lot. So he's like, oh, I went to his girlfriend. She's not his girl. I'm like, I'm not surprised. I'm not sure whether you put something in the water, but you just all seem to be banging everybody. So he's like, but I found a guy that'll do a criminal act for me if I buy him new kicks. You can't afford those. I have a feeling that's not going to be a problem because he is a criminal thief with no scruples. But like I said, miracle worker. 
So, I nicked him. The only thing that my miracles require is that I drag somebody else down from the position that they've earned with my absolute dead weight. So basically, when they finally get to the end of the story, it's like, look, I blackmailed him, and that got me what I wanted. It's okay, he didn't have to rob anyone this time, he just had to commit other crimes. What a class act. <laughs> This isn't it. It's Baldrick just without the brains. At least Baldrick just wanted a turnip all of his very own. This guy's still trying to work out if the Nintendo Switch is his dad. But I can make it work. Oh, great. It's not the part I needed, but it's the part I needed. Uh, that's gaslighting. That's what it is. You'll just swap out random pieces in a car for a bit that doesn't work and go, I just make it work. I just get some gaffer tape and strap it there. I reckon she's just gaslighting him and it's the exact part she needed and she's like, yeah, but I'm a miracle worker. Louise took me in when I had nowhere to go. The shop is my happy place. And the shop's everyone else's happy place as well because it means they don't have to spend their time around you. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Was that a bit much? <laughs> I can't believe you called her much. So Robin walks up and you think these are related. Uh, well, apparently not. Yo, we're dealing with guy. <laughs> and as soon as she says that, he appears and you're like, oh, they've clearly come together to talk to these people about the plan to get them involved in it, right? <laughs> well, all right. What's going on? How do you not know? You literally walked around the corner from the same place at the same time. That was way too much of a coincidence. It might actually be divine intervention. I got a plan to take Guy down and you ain't talking me out of it. All right, love, you're on your own. Go ahead and try. Let me clean up the mess afterwards. Guy needs to be taken down. A guy needs to be taken down. Yes. Which guy? There's a lot of guys. We drag him down to our level. Maybe she is self-aware after all. We need to defeat Guy because he's above us. He's too good for us. We need to drag him down to our level in the filth and the sewer. <laughs> and then we can beat him with experience. Wait, there wasn't even... that. Would, I didn't edit that. That was her plan. So how are we going to beat Guy? We're going to drag him down to our level in the dirt and the filth where he belongs. But he doesn't belong there. That's why he's better than you. No, but we do. This me right here? All right. Robin and I worked on this. I can tell, because it's a pile of trash, literally. Oh, me and Robin worked on this. Great. You uh, you put some trash on a table. Hardest you've worked your entire life, by the looks of it. It was like someone's going for elections, then we'll draw Guy here, lock him up in an underground cavern. Always ready for a getaway, huh? Yeah, she's used to it. Has to climb out the window when the wife returns home. We'll get the cash, he'll get the message. No amount of money is worth messing with Sherwood. So your plan, if I'm understanding this correctly, to solve all of Sherwood's problems, is to commit another robbery. <laughs> you couldn't write this. You know, we, we could just get the sheriff to arrest him. This guy who's called us that he's come to protect us from people like the sheriff who's trying to just improve our housing and lifestyle. But no, the, the way we're going to scare him off is to commit crime. They say it's okay. He's only got one gun, which for some reason the, the girl's carrying because he got sent away on a charge. I'm like, yeah, but what about that bloke that was with him? I mean, if you're already carrying one weapon, you might as well all do it. We get the purse, get the gun. Save the cheerleader, save the world. It's like one of the worst plans ever. You've basically just gone, we're gonna stand in this building and win. Y'all need to study this, memorize it. Yeah, I mean, don't forget where that petrol can goes, otherwise we're all screwed. Memorize my in-depth tactical plan of let's go to the underground where we know it best and he doesn't. I'm not joking, that was his plan. Memorize it. Okay, wait, well, I watched it once. I think I've got it. This is about as complicated as a soaker. We go after Guy, we can't miss. You notice that we didn't see a fire the arrow. We, ju we just saw the arrow land and then she's holding a bow. <laughs> oh, hang on. We might. She's got an arrow drawn. How far is she going to pull it back? You've caught it. We're never going to find out. We're going to keep you in suspense. I'm getting pretty good with that. We're never going to see it because she'll always be in the background. <laughs> you're getting good at that. That's why we're hiding her away. Cost some apples if you're feeling brave. No, never let her shoot one of your apples. She'll end up hitting your plums. Robin, tomorrow's going to be crazy. You ain't got to worry about much an hour. I'm not. <laughs> Based economy. I don't give a toss about them. I haven't spent a single second of my life contemplating their existence on this earth. And I don't plan to start now. <laughs> they could get vaporized and I wouldn't lose a blink of sleep. I'm worried about you. Oh, you're letting yourself down there, mate. I wouldn't worry if you got vaporized either. You're bringing arrows to a gunfight. The reasons that arrows are worse than a gun is because a gun has a magazine and can shoot longer distances and is easier to use. But a bow, if you take them by surprise, will still be just as deadly as long as you don't miss. Maybe guy gets the message. Maybe Maybe he doesn't. Well, 
And it doesn't need a message. The idea is it'll never need another message again, ever. That'd solve your problem. Otherwise, what's the bow for? Either way, he'll come back. Y you need to stop him coming back. If the entire point of this isn't to solve the problem permanently, just hand him into the police. And if he does, he'll be up for blood. Then hand him into the sheriff's department. They'll sort him out. So what are you saying? Don't miss. You and I both know we might have to end this. I thought that was the plan. Otherwise, what's the point of doing any of this? When I enlisted, I thought they put a gun in my hand. But it was Canada, and so they put a jar of maple syrup in instead, and a cookie jar. Instead, they made me a medic. <laughs> in Canada, that meant I ended up killing even more people. I wish I'd been a soldier, then my conscience would have been clear. <laughs> instead, they made me a medic. I had to kill a Robin. But they made me do it. It was the healthcare system. They didn't leave me any other choice. And neither are you, but we might have to be. Especially if they come in asking for a stair lift. We won't have any other choice. It's literally the meme. Hey, can somebody help me get up the stairs? No. How about death? <laughs> Why is any of this in your show? What would Lionheart say about that? Go abroad. That's what I'd say. Get a passport. Lionheart has nothing to say. Cause he's dead. I don't know if you noticed, Robin. It's the central theme of the show. He's dead. We didn't realize how many times I mean, you had a memorial service for him at the start just for the slow ones at the back will repeat it. If guy gets the chance, he'll kill us all. Put us out of our misery. At this point, I'm considering asking for a stair lift. Don't get in my way. Because I'm going to give him medical treatments. <laughs> Carries around this med bag with him, but it's like one of those suitcases which has an MP5 in it. Mom? Mom, you're supposed to be paralyzed, not deaf. Can I make you something to eat? I don't know. I mean, last time she tried it herself, I wet myself. So that's the funnier option. Ain't leaving without proof of life. There's definitely a joke about hospital insurance there. I'm not hungry. Maybe we could go for a walk or something. <laughs> no, no, stop it. Your mother is paralyzed from the waist down. <laughs> Mom, oh my God. You, you can't. And they said this was the best chair they had. Maybe we could go for a walk. You've believed the story that she was a flight risk too much. Oh, my sides hurt. This show's gonna kill me. <laughs> Why do your reviews of Robin Hood come out too? I don't know. Maybe she doesn't come out with lines like that. Fresh air might be good. What, you're just gonna carry on? No, but... Why isn't the mum... I can't walk you daft bit. Like, somebody. Somebody has to say something. You can't let that line go. How did no one... How did no one filming this pissed themselves laughing. That's what I want to know. How did she manage to keep a straight face acting this? That is talent. Yeah, so we want you to tell your paralyzed mom to go for a walk and keep a straight face. Look, I'm at least coming to grab your dishes. That's it. Rob from your own mom in your own house. She just goes into a room and she's like running marathons around her own bed. Oh, sorry, I was faking it. You just left her in the chair. At least she's gone into her own bedroom. At least get her into the bed. It's far more comfortable. Why didn't you tell me about Red Cat? I hear Guy Gisborne is back too. Anything else you're protecting me from? Dad Oh, you didn't tell me that guy was back as well. Well, what were you gonna do? Roll up on him. He rolled up on me. Roll over his toes or something. I think wanted things to feel normal. Normal. That's funny. Not as funny as her asking you to go for a walk. To be fair, you didn't laugh at that one either. Normal ended the second I saw his finger on that trigger. No, normal ended the moment he pulled the trigger. Do you know what was going through my head? Duck. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> there can't have been too many things. When I was laying there like that? I thought we were still on him and he had his finger on the trigger. Now we've jumped post-mortem. Please, God. Please let this be a big insurance payout. Please take care of my babies when I'm gone. Buy the insurance. But I'm not gone, am I? You don't have to sound so sorry about it. How much do you hate your own family? Please look after my daughters when I'm gone. Unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not even gone. I mean, I've got to put up with you and look after you myself. I was hoping I could palm you off on God. <laughs> But wouldn't you know, he's got away with it again. Still here. You're supposed to touch wood that wheelchair arm fabric. Taking up space. All I hear nowadays is everyone going, I want to take up space. Oh, the best thing you can aspire to, is it? Just pushing oxygen atoms out of a location. Perhaps if you had more worthwhile life goals than taking up space, you might achieve something. A million miles from who I used to be. The one who emptied a cookie jar every night. The one who decided to get with people who surf on sofa. She had far better standards when she was younger. Guy? The sheriff, friends, these people. What do you mean, these people? Explain yourself. Who tell us we're nothing. To be fair, I mean, isn't that everybody who's got standards? Like, I think that's 
most of Canada. I think most of Canada would watch this and go, you are nothing. Like, what'd you do? You spend your life wobbling around stealing from people. Oh, please tell us the contribution that you've made to literally anyone on earth. Who take everything. That's literally your entire pissing show that you are nothing who just takes everything. That is literally the show that you've made. It's an accurate description of you. Why are you moaning? And if you are moaning about it, why don't you change? You don't get to whine about your own pissing choices. No, Robin. Violence is their language. Who are they? I, at this point, I don't understand because you've said so many people. That is not an argument that we'll survive. The thieves. I don't even know what that scene was. The thieves are moaning that consequences are happening to them. Yeah, the thieves. We're over to a drone now outside a pharmacy, and he's running a protection racket on stores now, apparently. Oh, it's one of their fake drones that they stole, like everything else they own. I'm getting my money back. Although at least this person with their thumbs actually looks as if they're physically controlling it. Now, admittedly, you can see the screen, and while they're moving it, the screen isn't moving. I'm getting my money back. Hey! But at this point, it is way better than whatever we had with Friar Tuck. Who's going? <laughs> it was like, whoa, whoa, those things would be going all over the place. But they head out into the wilds in daylight with their glowing masks, just so everyone is aware of who they are from a hundred meters away. You good? I mean, this is a stealth mission. Maybe turn off your LEDs. Remember the plan. No one's going to forget the plan. The plan was one step. Go underground and take advantage of your knowledge of it. But the poor business owner, who is running a legitimate business, but decided to employ criminals for some reason, gets a visit from the man himself, presumably for protection money. <laughs> I don't know why you look so scared, mate. He just took you for a spin. And then, of course, we get an interjection from the peanut gallery at the back. What a dump. Should feel right at home then, love, shouldn't you? Coco! Cuidado con tu lengua, eh? What? Cuidado con tu lengua, eh? Maybe, again, maybe he's French-Canadian. My apologies. Oh, he's a nice bloke. She's young. Disrespectful. This is, again, a villain who's actually a decent character. He's got a bit of charisma about him. Every single time this show makes a good character, they're always a villain. But then he notices the vice. Real tools are the hands. Yes. And so it would be really stupid if you injured a mechanic's hands while running a protection racket. And so we take him over to the vice, put his hand in it, and goes, you disrespected me? It's like, no, at this point, you're just disrespecting yourself. This this is bad business. You're making yourself look like an idiot. This is bad character writing because it doesn't make any sense why he would injure his own business. The guy was going to give him the money. And I know you went, oh, an idiot just wants pay. Well, if you wanted that, there's a lot easier ways to do it than uh, running a protection racket. I know. Is this going to take a long time? I mean, what can I say? Clearly a great actress because the entire aim is you're meant to be insufferable and it, it's working. She really nails petulant. Uh, <sighs> Maybe she's had a lot of practice. So he's like, look, if you're in such a rush, just do it yourself. And you're like, okay, I'll go and do it. That sounds like fun. So we crush his hand in the vice, despite the fact it means he won't be able to work. So then he, he won't be able to give us money. Then we can't run a protection racket. And I'll be honest, it's a good acted scene. I just don't know why any of it's happening. Which I suppose you could say is writing, but it's like, eh. If the point is this guy is a horrific git, it, you get that across. <laughs> but as they're crushing his hand, it turns out Robin was there all along. Or much was there. I think it's much. Yeah, she doesn't try and save her boss. <laughs> Right off. Oh, we knew he'd come here to rob my guy, and I could have rode off at any time, but I thought, nah, let him get his hand stuck in a vice first before I decided to start my engine. At this point, I didn't even blame them. I blame the person on the pissing bike. We go to the underground car park. Nowhere to go! Isn't that a little bit suspicious? Like, they drove into a dead end rather than just down the road, and you decided to drive into the middle of the open and then be like, ah, we got you! But you start hearing voices. Masked voices. Sherwin is off limits. Why don't you shoot him with a bow and arrow? It might sink in a little bit faster. Hiding in the dark? Like what? At least he knows his enemies. So they fire a bow and arrow that hits this girl's bag. I think you're supposed to think, that's such an incredible shot. And I'm just like, she clearly missed. If that was a head, you'd now be dealing with two people. So they nick a bag and run off with it, which now means they don't have a firearm. So two people go after her bag and just leave him on his own against a threat he can't see when that guy's meant to be his bodyguard. It seems really badly planned. <laughs> And I think those noises are meant to be them getting beaten up. Although, you know, they could have just found the cookie jar at this point. Ah! <laughs> okay, so they fire the bow and arrow, hit him in the shoulder. It's like, oh, you, I would have just done that at the start. And out of the darkness comes the LEDs. The first time that they may be useful, actually be useful. In fact, it's amazing he didn't see the glowing LEDs from their masks when he was looking around for them. I'm not going to let you hurt anyone else. You're going to have to stop him then. And the guy comes back, hey! Hey, I'm surprised he didn't go, Oi, Robin, stop. 
And once more, we get a flashback. It's Guy versus Lionheart. You'll never run Sherwood. You're gonna have to stick around then. We could just get rid of you. So the guy pulls a gun. They wrestle for it. One shot goes off. It drops. Oh no. And he's gonna grab it and then miss. No, apparently he did shoot Lionheart. So now the kid grabs the gun, holds Guy hostage with it. No, no, John. And Lionheart's like, no, no, don't do it. Whereas 99% of the population is like, we can't do it, laddie. But as Lionheart's going, no, no, don't do it, is it gives up and lets him go free after he's just brutally slaughtered his friend. I mean, considering he was willing to become a medic, I'm surprised. Although this does prove he's pretty cold-hearted as it is. And so after making that mistake as a kid, only to find out that Guy came back and started to brutally assault all of his friends, he's now asking Robin to do the same thing. He's a kill, but we're not. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, you, 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 you tried on Prince in the first episode well enough. So she's like, get out of here, don't come back. In fact, it's a bit more impressive than that. You, you probably have to see it for the full emotional impact. And don't come back. Oh, come on. It's always nice when that follows one of your big emotional moments. A piece of expressive music really enforces the medium. So they record him getting dragged out of there. That's right. They shot a guy with a bow and arrow and then recorded the evidence of themselves committing the crime. Because they can't even say it was self-defense. He was alone in an abandoned car park and not even doing anything to anybody at the time they shot him. And he's like, oh, you fixed my bike. They're like, what, Robin? No. Oh, okay, no. Thanks for the ride. The hood. I'd be like, what? You fixed my bike? And then it was stolen by a gang of murderous lunatics who go around robbing places and used in a crime. Well, I can't use the bike anymore, can I? I'm gonna have to report it stolen. Otherwise, they'll think I did it. You've essentially stitched me up for a crime. God bless him. Why are you so proud of yourself? He could get arrested now. Whoever they are. Whoever they are, they just stitched me up for a crime I didn't commit. So it's like, oh, you saved my life, despite the fact that it was your friends that got me into this mess in the first place. So now you can test drive the bike. I've literally just said you've been riding the bike, so you've already ridden it. Figures I'd finally pull something. Well, considering the size of that cookie jar, I thought that was a common occurrence, to be honest. So after realizing that their violent crimes just attract violent criminals, what do you think the lesson that they've learned from this? You know, every TV show ends with a moral lesson, a lifetime value that you should take to heart if you, you want to live a fulfilling and satisfied life. What's theirs? What have they learned from their life of violent crime? We're unstoppable. Yeah, we were. And maybe we shouldn't stop. Maybe we should just be violent criminals even more. Perhaps next time we can start mugging old grannies. These people think they can just come here and take- She's constantly saying these people. I still don't know what she means. We can stop them. Take back what's ours. What do you mean take back what's your- You're not taking back and you're stealing other people's property that you've never owned. Robin Hood stole from tax collectors. He was taking back their own money. You're just nicking stuff that you have no right to. We'll pick our fight and give what we steal to our people. Yeah, but your giving things is literally holding a party with a bouncy castle. I hardly think you're the best people for centralized distribution. We're still doing the music stuff though, right? Of course. <laughs> you have to. Can we at least negotiate on that bit of the plan? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta let people know we rep Sherwood and Forest. No, no, telling people where you live as you commit criminal activities is the problem. Y'all with me? I already know. Oh uh, yeah? You're gonna get arrested within the week. And he's like, oh, I'll join. I'm a medic and you're gonna get shot. Now, I should point out, I originally had this on 2X speed and it was hilarious. The arrow I shoot at the bullseye. Had that boy running cause he ain't a cool guy. But I figured you should hear the full horrific nature of it first before I show you the glory. Oh, no, like a zero, zero, zero. Try to hide behind him. Oh no. They've literally uploaded a video of them shooting a man with a bow and arrow and having his body dragged away. Here we come, baby. You would go away for life. You're still rapping in front of your own house while you record evidence of you brutally assaulting a man with a lethal weapon. I mean, I'll be honest, if you play it at two times speed, it gets even better. That's right. You're getting it. <laughs> oh, congratulations, you've managed to work out how wheels work. You've successfully reached the level of people who lived 4000 BC. Oh. I mean, to be fair, there's literally no way around that cup unless you went around the other side. And even then, I'm not sure there's a gap big enough to get the chair through. You're a stupid ass! Setting up impossible courses. Okay. Well, I don't know about the two of you, but I worked myself up an appetite. Anyone want to eat garbage and watch trash? Way ahead of you. I've been doing it for hours. Also, my favourite part of this scene was the Robin Hood advert while you're watching 
Robin Hood! I knew you thought your audience was stupid when you kept repeating the same thing over to him again. I didn't think you'd have to remind him what pissing show they're watching though. So the daughter brings an ice cream tub and they just all get spoons and she's like, oh, share with your sister. I'm like, okay. Why use bowls? Get the ice cream out of the tub and use, look, if you're on your own, fair enough, you get out of the tub. Who cares? If there's three of you, Use a pissing bowl. But at that moment, Guy's in his car and the sheriff turns up. And oh look, it's the guy doing his job. Let's talk about the hood. Oh, he's working with him. I mean, it'd be far more likely that he just like arrested him, you know, did his job. But we can't have him doing that because otherwise, you know, we might have to admit that they have a use. And I gotta say, what was that story? This guy came back from prison, thus proving that prison works, by the way, <laughs> because all the while he was in there, he wasn't causing trouble. So if we only did it to the main characters, we'd also solve that problem as well. So, we but he came back and he set up a really complex protection racket business simply so he could hurt people because he didn't want to go around and hurt people. So he needed to get money, even though it specifically said he didn't care about money. He only cared about hurting people. And then we had half the episode where he wasn't even hurting people. And then one scene where I just randomly decided, this guy's given me everything I want. I'll hurt him now. Surely he'd only hurt the people that didn't pay. That would be his, like, bonus perk. But no, because like everything in the show, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Same thing with the sheriffs. Like, there's ways that you could write that to do it properly, but instead, you've got to go over the top with it, to the point where it's a parody. Because despite the fact that this is supposed to be you know, the world that you want to change. I have no idea how it works. But I will say that I thought Guy was a, a, it was an entertaining character. He could actually flip across and have some charisma. But above all, this episode was almost as funny as the first one. So as far as the comedy value goes, we are right back up there. I'm not sure if that's good or bad, but it does make it very entertaining to film. <laughs> but those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe more videos like this in the future and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.